Looking to achieve that real metal look in your 3D prints, something like Beskar or Steel, kind of like that? Well, I've got the full breakdown for you in today's video, and it's coming up next. <laughs> What's up everyone, back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad. Have you ever had a 3D print that you wanted it to look metal? Maybe you were building a Mandalorian helmet and you wanna make it look like Beskar, or maybe you're making an Iron Man helmet and you're going for that chrome metal look. You just want something that looks better than what you see from most rattle cans at Walmart or something like that. Well, today I'm gonna to be telling you about a product that you may or may not have heard of. It is called Duralumin and it is by the Digital Armory. Now this is a specialty paint it is really wild. It gives you some awesome effects on your 3D prints. And today's tutorial, we're gonna go through the whole process. It's kind of a DIYer's guide. I'm gonna show you two different ways you can actually wet sand your 3D print to give you an absolutely flawless finish that's gonna make this Duralumin really pop. I'm gonna go through the whole process, beginning to end, uh, ways that you can prep it, certain things that you can do. And obviously when we get down to actually applying the Duralumin, I did it on not just one, but two different face plates, two different types of wet sands, two different ways that you can get your prints absolutely smooth and make them look as awesome as these. So without any further ado, let's get things going. All right, starting off here, I decided to use a resin printed face plate to keep post-processing to a minimum. I'm gonna take some 400 grit and sand this, get it nice and smooth, looking nice and clean. Next, what we wanna do is remove any uh, residual oils or any grease, so make sure to have some gloves on here and use what's called prep all. Wipe this down. Uh, this stuff is a solvent. It dries pretty quick. Uh, once it's nice and clean and ready to go, uh, you can go ahead and grab a tack cloth that's gonna remove any lint or any debris that may still be floating around on the model. Next, we wanna go ahead and put it in our paint tent here, and we're just gonna apply some filler primer. So I opted to use some U-Pull, and we're gonna do a couple coats of filler primer, get this guy covered. After applying two to three coats of the filler primer and waiting about 15 to 20 minutes for it to dry and sanded the model down, uh, really focusing on some of the areas where I noticed imperfections on the side. So I went ahead and sanded this with 320 and 400. And then once again, back in the spray tent here, wiping it down again with the tack cloth to remove any lint. And then we just did our final coat of filler primer just to fill in any sanding scratches or anything like that. Once you've inspected your model and you're happy with the results, we can get onto our base coat. So Duralumin needs a black base and I'm using a flat or a matte primer as a base. It's perfectly okay to do this because the clear coat is gonna add the gloss. I love using flat and matte paints because they don't have a ton of solvents. They don't create a ton of orange peel. You can see here just how great and smooth the surface looks. So after about an hour of dry time, we can go ahead and add the clear coat. You always wanna start with the light tack coat as your first coat and then continue on with multiple coats somewhere in the three to four range. You can see here after our fourth and final coat, just how great this is looking. Now there's no wet sanding or anything like that done. I will talk about that shortly here, but you can see this 1K, uh, aside from the awesome metallic effect it gives, it lays really nice. Uh, wait about 10 minutes in between coats and then wanna wait about 24 hours before we wet sand. So now this is our second model here, but we're using something a little bit different. We're using a satin base and we're using just an everyday Krylon acrylic enamel clear coat. We're gonna do something a little bit different with both these face plates. So let me show you the results and we'll talk a little bit more about it. We have sprayed the two face plates and I use the Rust-Oleum satin paint and then just a everyday clear coat that I had laying around. Uh, just to show you that this method is possible with basically anything that a DIYer can get. Just your everyday rattle can. It's not a 1K, it's not a 2K. And that's what most people start off using. This is what the majority of your rattle can clear coat jobs are gonna look like. There's a number of reasons for that. One, you know, this clear coat, it doesn't have very volatile paint. And what that means is it has weaker solvents. Uh, it's meant to dry quick, but when you get certain solvents like that, compromise quality of finish. And you can see that from here. It's, you know, it's grainy and it doesn't really look that good. You know, another reason why, you know, rattle cans, you're limited to quality is because as you spray it, 
um, you know, you're tipping the bottle, so the pressure often changes, especially as you get lower to the can. Now, this can was pretty full, and we still got a, you know, a so-so finishing job. It doesn't have a very big angle of, of spray, you know what I mean? It doesn't really cover the model, so you might be able to get it really good right here, but then as you continue going, you start getting that dry look. Now, that is a lot different than the 1K. As you can see, the 1K is a lot clearer uh, it's a lot less grainier, just a higher quality paint, you know. Um, there, the paint is a lot more volatile, it has better solvents, there's not as much shrink rate. So when you just look at how much cleaner, you know, this is, it's significantly better uh, than the other one. We're still going to take this one and make it look a lot better with some wet sanding. So let me kind of flip the camera around here. I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of the mask and just show you how to do some wet sanding. Get your finish looking a little bit better before we spray dirt aluminum. All right, so here you go, bird's eye view of my foot to do some wet sanding, uh, and actually both of these here. Uh, two different methods though. With this one, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, wet sand this down and just spray more clear coat down. Now, you can see this a little bit better. Uh, you know, like I said, a lot of times when you have something that's curved, um, you know, you start getting it here and then all that overspray uh, is inevitably what makes it dry whereas if you had an HVLP something that had a bigger fan uh, just a better quality clear coat uh, it would lay significantly better and comparing the 1k here you can see just how much better it still has a little bit of graininess to it um, and you're always going to get orange peel to some degree especially with the rattle can shinier uh, this is uh, versus this. So this is a 1K. Personally never use the aerosol 2K, but I've seen some people's paint jobs and uh, it looks really good for, for a rattle can. It's just really expensive and it's pretty much a one-time use. Those 2Ks, it's got the uh, activator on the bottom. You push it and you have like 24 hours to use it. So very important before we get into this, you wanna do multiple coats. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, we're gonna wet sand this. Uh, with this one, I did about four coats total. Um, you just wanna make sure you don't get any runs or anything like that. Of course, you kinda wet sand them out, but you don't wanna create more work uh, than you need to. A light tacking coat, and then after about five to 10 minutes, you can do that medium coat. I did the, uh, the coats as needed and we've got two pieces here that are pretty much ready for wet sanding. Uh, let your model sit for at least 24 hours before you do this. This has been sitting for two days just because I was super busy yesterday at work. So I'm gonna start with 1500 and just do a light sand and then kind of jump up to 3000. We don't wanna take too much off just because that's what you're doing when you wet sand. You are, you are literally taking off some clear coat and trying to smooth it out. Just some water and I'm just gonna start with the top. Now, when you are wet sanding, you want to be very, very careful of any edges. Uh, you want to you don't want to go as heavy with, because if you burn through that clear and take the paint off, you got to start this whole process over. So you can see that it's not too gritty, but there's a little bit of sound. And what you want to do is basically wet sand this out until you don't hear that grittiness. So we'll start over here where it's fresh, see if you can hear it. And if you come over here, it's not quite as loud. You basically want to do this until it feels smooth on the sandpaper. Now I have a interface pad here. I don't really like sanding just by hand because you tend to, I guess, overfeel the sandpaper. But anytime I sand with anything, Rubble, shut. Anytime I sand with anything, I always have some sort of interface. And if you ever see color start to transfer onto here, so if we start seeing black on here, you want to stop immediately. Is notice how this is nice and smooth? That's really what we want. Now, again, we don't need it perfect because even when we respray the clear coat on here, we're going to reintroduce more orange peel. We're just reducing this to make it look better. Sand this whole thing with 1500. My tries at 3000. These are nice because it has a, it's a sponge built right into it. Get it nice and smooth here. And then we're going to uh, prep it with some wax and grease remover, wipe it down, put it back in the booth, do our coat of clear, see how it looks. You're using more aggressive sandpaper. You don't have to spend quite as long uh, because the same as if you were, you know, comparing, say, one 
60 to 320, the 160 is gonna be more aggressive and have more bite. Just kind of applying even pressure, just trying to get it to where it starts to feel smooth through the pad. I like to clean off in between just so I can actually see the progress that I'm making. Also too, if you want to reduce the bite of your sandpaper a little bit more, if you're a little bit apprehensive and you just don't wanna to get too aggressive, you can add some Johnson & Johnson Baby Shampoo. Uh, it is a nice neutral lubricant additive that you can add to your mixture. Do not use things like Dawn dish soap. Dawn is acidic with non-fully cured clear coat, which I mentioned in past videos, it can take two weeks to 30 days to fully cure paint. The acid will actually attack the clear coat. It can cause hazing, it can cause dimples and just imperfections in the clear, which we don't want. It'll basically penetrate all the way down to the base coat and cause some irreversible damage. The only way to fix it would be completely re-clear coating it, which we don't want to do. The problem with doing this barehanded is sometimes you feel too much. You feel like you have to keep going. Like I tell people, you know, you want to, when you sand this, if it feels gritty, keep going. Well, this interface pad kind of reduces it to where you don't feel too much. If you feel too much, you, you know, a lot of times, you'll just have this thought in your head like, oh, I have to keep going, I have to keep going until it's smooth. Well, sanding clear coat is a lot different than sanding primer. Um, primer, you can sand it all the way down and it's no big deal, right? Well, you sand too much of this stuff off, you gotta start over, which uh, you can see here that this is cleaning up really good. It didn't prepped like super crazy. This was literally just my faceplate that I did my uh, one filler primer test on and then the other half I used the uh, Liquitex. So, you know, this, I literally just like, threw some filler primer on, sanded it with 400 and said, however it looks, it looks. So this is not 100%, but I think it'll look pretty good for what we're doing it for. Once you get this knocked down, the 3000 is pretty fast. It's just kind of smoothing everything out. I wet sand cars all the time at work and it sucks. <laughs> I would take this over doing full panels and full cars any days, but the cars pay a little bit better. This dries here, we still, you know, and if you want to go back, you can you can do more, but I'm not gonna go too crazy here. Now that this looks like this, we can do the same exact process. And to get this super smooth, I'm actually gonna change things up. I'm gonna do 3,000, and then just for the heck of it, I'm gonna do 5,000 just to get this really smooth. So I'm gonna get this knocked down, and so we'll take a look at this when we're done. When you do the uh, 5,000, um, you know, this is obviously the least aggressive sandpaper that you'll probably ever use. And this is where you can just kind of take your time. This is actually almost going to polish the helmet to a certain degree. So this is really gonna look nice. It's not gonna be shiny, but it's just, it's, it's such a high grit that it's just refining it to be super, super, super smooth and really going to help decrease any graininess or any areas we might have missed without potentially stripping off any clear coat. And see how it kind of starts to make it, see how it's like shiny, shinier, I guess, than the 3000. So just have fun with the 5000, enjoy it. Your helmet's gonna look awesome after you do this. But I really just, you know, focus on trying to remember some of the areas that might need a little bit more love. Still being wary of the edges. You know, at this point, this thing should be buttery smooth. You know, I talked about hearing it sounding gritty. You can hear that there's no grittiness here. Just use that as a guide. That knocked pretty much a majority of the graininess out. Obviously, I had to be wary of here because I didn't want to burn through these little edges. It definitely got rid of a lot of it and put clear coat back on top of this. So what we want to do is just go ahead and wipe this down with a wax and grease remover and then we can go ahead and do clear coat. Now, what I'm going to do on this one 
is if you've watched any of my past videos where I actually take the drill adapter, buff and polish that out. That's going to by far give you the best finish ever because we've gotten rid of all the graininess. Then we're going to go through and buff and polish this and this thing is going to look like a mirror. So, But I'm showing you the two differences because some people may be more comfortable and happy with how this looks, other people might want to go really OCD. That technique was how I did Vader. People always ask me, how do you get your Darth Vader to look so real? How is the paint so crisp? If you haven't watched that video, I'm going to demonstrate it for you on this one. I'm going to do this one the same way I did this one. I'm going to do 1500, 3000, and 5000, and then we're going to buff and polish it. So I'm going to get that all set up and show you. But uh, we're going to get some clear on this, uh, do a couple coats, see how it looks, and then we can get spraying some Duralumin on it and go from there. All right, so now that we have the other face plate wet sanded and we reapplied the clear coat, we're gonna add Duralumin. So if you've never seen Duralumin, here it is. It's pre-mixed, you don't have to worry about adding any reducer, any hardener, anything like that. You can basically just throw it in whatever gun that you wanna use and go ahead and apply it. Today we're gonna be using a battery powered airbrush. This is by far the easiest way to apply this. You don't have to worry about having a compressor. You can have just a basic shelter. You definitely want to make sure it is in some sort of enclosure. You don't want to be doing this outside where wind can hit it or any debris or anything like that. So again, we're going to be using the Wagner spray shelter that I already have set up. Uh, the face plates sat in there. It's cured. We're ready to add dirt limit. So I have a, a smaller reservoir here. Uh, some people prefer to use the mini HVLPs to work really, really well. But again, this is a DIYers guide. So something like this, very easy. You basically just turn it on. Once you get the Duralumin on, you can spray it. I'll show it here in a minute. I have an interesting way that you can fill the Duralumin up. So with these small receptacles here, it's very hard to get liquid in without dumping it. And obviously we don't want to waste this stuff because it's not cheap. I've come up with an ingenious way uh, with a little syringe and a straw. And all we're gonna do here is just give the Duralumin a little shake. Suck some of this up here. Probably don't need to use quite as long of a straw, but I like to live dangerously. Now this stuff does have um, some pretty heavy vapors to it. Definitely want to have a respirator, something like a dust mask or an N95 mask just isn't going to cut it. So. Uh, I am going to be putting my respirator on, so I'll just do some commentary over this. We're gonna turn this on, which it already is. Uh, we're just gonna adjust our fan a little bit. We've got plenty of fluid in there. We're gonna do some light coats. Duralumin likes multiple light coats. So we're just gonna basically apply it until we get the color that we like. So I'm gonna get my respirator on, turn the fan on so it's sucking all the vapors and fumes and everything out. Start making this thing look like it's metal. So onto the spray booth, let's get spraying some Duralumin. And here's a shot of the faceplate just before Duralumin. This is the faceplate that we did the three-stage wet sand to and reapplied the clear coat. Uh, definitely a lot cleaner, a lot crisper, uh, much more refined. Very important. Wait about two hours before we add Duralumin on here. Go ahead and prep your model like we did before. Wipe it down with a tack cloth to remove any dust, debris, or lint. And then here in the battery-powered airbrush, very simple. Uh, once you get your fan and you adjust your regulator, just simply kind of rotate the model, you know, left and right here, and just apply adequate, even amounts. You don't have to put it on super heavy. Duralumin likes light multiple coats. The more coats you add, the more of that chrome effect you're going to do. I did less coats on this, three to four coats on here, giving it a little bit more of a darker uh kind of Beskar look to it. After it was all applied, it does dry pretty quick. You don't want to handle it, but you can see here, gives a really great effect. You can still see some of that graininess, uh, you know, that's left over from reapplying the clear coat, but ultimately this piece does look substantially cleaner and crisper. Here after full cure, after about two hours, uh, we go ahead and look at it in the uh, daylight. Awesome, awesome effect. I mean, that looks like real metal to me. This really does resemble, uh, you know, like Beskar from the Mandalorian, a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. Really wild looking finish here. Now let's move on to the other faceplate with the Duplicolor 1K. All right, so now that we applied the Duralumin, go ahead and start working on mask A. So this is the uh, mask that I applied 1K clear coat to. This was what sanded by hand with the same process as I did with the other. We're not gonna apply more clear coat to this. We're gonna buff and polish it down to refine and really smooth out this whole surface. This is a little bit different because we're not introducing new clear coat. We're taking what we've sanded down 
and we're polishing it up to make it look as shiny as possible. This is really going to give you the best look possible. If you want that absolute mirror finish, this is going to give that to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera around, show you some of the different media that we're working with, the polishes, the compounds, the adapters, things like that. Show you how to do this process, clean this up, and then get some Duralumin spray down here. So let's go. Yes, obviously there is a number of things that you need. So one is the mask. Here is a final look at it. Uh, you can see that I was able to get a lot of that grittiness and orange peel out. Now I will tell you, bit of advice, if you're sanding a 1K or a 2K, you're definitely gonna spend more time versus these just standard aerosol Krylon or Rust-Oleum, whatever you're using. Uh, this is a lot more volatile. It's a little bit more durable, a little bit harder. So it's gonna take a little bit more effort to get it knocked out. Obviously, we're gonna need some polishing media. I like to grab some Meguiar's M205. It says finishing polish, but it's actually a pretty heavy polish that you can use as a compound with the right pad. So I like using this because it's not too aggressive especially when we're working with uh, softer paints and things like that. We want a finishing polish, so I like to use Gion for that. We're going to need a drill with the buffing adapter. You're going to need some sort of wool pad, because that's what we want to start with, is the most aggressive pad. So we have a couple wool pads here. You're going to want a medium-grade polishing pad. And depending on your liking, you can do a finishing and an ultra finishing. I'm probably just going to do uh, those two steps there. And that should be good enough for what we're doing. But we want to start with the wool pad because that's the heaviest. Just like when you're sanding, you want to start from most aggressive to least aggressive. So we want to shake our polish up here. And we want to put some of that on our pad. And you want to go ahead and support the model. And kind of spread this out a little bit. You don't want it clumped up to where it's slinging all over the place. Big thing I want to say before I do this, this cannot be done with hand polishing. Um, if you try to hand buff or hand do whatever with a towel or whatever, um, all you're going to do is add scratches and swirls. This process here with the machine is actually going to take them out. So um, yeah, you could take a towel and sit there and rub and rub and rub and it'll make it shiny, but that rubbing, that force is just going to scratch it all up. Hand polishing, hand buffing, whatever you want to call it, huge waste of time. Get yourself a drill, get yourself some of these pads and adapters, you'll be good to go. You can use a three inch polisher, which I've mentioned in my videos before. However, this is a DIYer. Most people have a drill. You can get these adapters and things at Walmart or on Amazon. Like I said, links will be in the description. So we got this all over here. We're gonna go ahead and just buff it. You are hitting it with the wool pad because that's going to take out a majority of the scratches and other things that have been introduced. So I'm going to go through, buff this, wipe this down, show you how it looks. So when doing this method with the drill, uh, it is nice because you can get a nice handle for it. You can kind of move the faceplate or the object around to get nice little angles and detailed areas. You don't want to put too much force on this. Understand that that drill is going to continue to spin. So it's the same amount of speed really no matter what you do. You can let off the trigger a little bit, but the more force and the more pressure you put on, the more aggressive it's going to get. It's going to generate heat. You could potentially burn the paint on this. So it doesn't matter if you're doing it with the wool pad, uh, with the orange pad or with the finishing pad if you put too much pressure you're going to generate a lot of heat a lot of these pieces are plastics things like that you can burn through the paint so always always make sure you just want to kind of have the pad in place if that makes sense don't introduce too much pressure if it kind of snags the model and turns it you know you're putting too much pressure just kind of let that pad in a sense skip off the top here kind of like i'm doing there so what you want to do is go ahead and go over the whole model here get it cleaned up and then move on to the next step So we can see that it's already starting to bring back some shine. What we want to do now is use that same polish, but we want to use our heavy polishing orange pad. Now that M205, sometimes it tends to be a little bit sticky and uh, it'll haze up the model. But you can see here with this orange polishing pad, how much it's, you know, here it's like it's the wool pad. It, It'll get rid of scratches, but it kind of leaves it hazy. That's why it's so important to do uh, the proper steps when you are buffing and polishing. Throwing just a little bit of Gion polish on here because it's a little bit easier to take off. So I'm gonna try to clean up all this haze that the wool pad and the M205 left behind. So 
you can see here how this polish is just adding so much shine and i'll give you better shots of this when it's done but i am going to go through and polish the rest of this down and then we'll move on to the next step so now here doing this finishing polish with the black finishing pad this is very similar to when i talked about uh sanding with the 5000 grit this is kind of the fun part this is where you can spend a little bit of time uh, make sure that your model has all of the swirls all of the scratches all of those imperfections that the sandpaper uh, might have left in when getting rid of the orange peel again don't add too much pressure this is a little bit different than if you were working on car paint believe it or not even a finishing pad can eventually get rid of light imperfections like swirls and scratches and things like that so have fun with it take your time don't introduce too much pressure give it a good wipe down and when all is said and done this thing is going to look like glass can see here wow what a difference you see how clean the light is reflecting off that there's no graininess there's no orange peel we've been able to knock out a ton of the imperfection and defects that rattle cans leave behind uh, this is a process that if you want your paint to look absolutely crispy fresh this is the best way to do it uh, up close here you can tell just again how clean the light is this is going to pay off so much at the end when we put that duralumin on it's going to be so clean so precise uh, when that chrome effect looks on there it's it's gonna look like real metal can't wait to show you guys so once this is all done we can go ahead and prep our model we want to go ahead and use a wax and grease remover again because polishes do have uh, you know residual oils and things in them as lubricants so we want to go ahead wipe that all down wipe it with our tack cloth and then go back to duralumin so here we are applying Duralumin again, uh, same concept apply. Set your fan, get your regulator going, and just apply adequate even coats. We're gonna put a few more coats on this one somewhere in the range of five to six. I really wanna go for that chrome look on this. So basically just kind of take your time with a smaller reservoir like this, you may need to fill it up two, possibly three times. And see here, this stuff dries really quick. Continue to move the brush so you don't create any runs or anything like that. Once this piece starts winding down here, you can see the effect that it's given. So I'm gonna put the final touches on this and then let's take a look at how this mask looks. Lo and behold, what did I tell you? Here is the final piece. This is the mask after doing about five and a half coats. Uh, this one definitely looks more chrome and you can see just how clean and crisp uh, you know, taking that time to wet sand, to buff, to polish, to refine that clear, to get it nice and clean. Th this is the effect you're going to get. This is definitely something that is worth its weight in gold to put that effort in. Going back to the other mask though, you know, still looks pretty good. You know, if you're a little bit apprehensive about using the drill, you can still get a great looking mask from this. So whether you go with option A or option B, you're going to have a great looking mask if you use these tips, applying Duralumin. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There is the breakdown to using Duralumin. And trying to keep it as simple as possible, that's why I did mention, you know, some of those real basic products that you can use, like the Rust-Oleum and the Acrylic Enamel Clear, things like that. Even the Duplicolor 1K, that's something you can get on Amazon. Go to O'Reilly's AutoZone, get that locally. I did bring in some advanced methods uh, with the wet sanding, but it's very, very important, you know. Uh, Duralumin as a paint itself, it has a very low shrink rate. So when you put it on, there's really no orange peel, no texture. So Getting that clear coat nice and refined is very, very important. It's gonna pay dividends. It's gonna make your 3D prints look absolutely flawless. So if you follow any of my uh, prep videos in the past, get it nice and smooth, get rid of all those layer lines, uh, get into putting your black base, uh, and then get into your clear coat. I didn't notice a huge difference as far as the pop goes, maybe a little bit more with the 1K. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much more a 2K actually makes this pop. That is a video I'm gonna do down the road. I'm gonna be using the HVLP setup, so it'll be kind of a Duralumin advanced video, uh, so to speak. And then as far as the wet sanding goes, that's why I showed those two different options. Uh, there may be some people that are just, you know, apprehensive about using a drill and, you know, wet sanding the clear and then buffing it and polishing it. With practice, you will get more and more comfortable with it. Process here where I simply wet sanded it and then reapplied the clear. Uh, it, it still came out, you know, really awesome. Between the two, I definitely think that this one, because it was buffed and polished down, you know, just so smooth, uh, it does look a little bit better. Uh, I went back and I was messing around with this one and just showing you that um, you can make it lighter. So initially it was darker, like up here, and then I applied more coats down here. So the more coats you do, obviously the more chrome it's gonna look. So if you want something more of a dark metal, uh, go for, you know, maybe three coats five coats and up, you're gonna get that chrome, uh, real steel looking. Either way you go with the wet sanding, you are gonna get 
just great results either way. It's gonna look way better than if you just rattle canned it. Either option you go with, you're gonna get great results every time. But there still are some very, you know, essential things that you need, uh, things like the spray shelter. Applying this stuff in a well-ventilated area definitely has some fumes. You know, the spray tent, making sure it's protected so you don't get debris on it. It gives a wild effect. Both turned out really awesome. Uh, you've seen the results, it's a great product. Definitely, 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 if you're trying to get that metalized look, that steel chrome look, best car look, go out and grab this stuff. Hit up the guys from the Digital Armory and tell them DW sent you. I know there was a lot covered in this video, but if there's anything that you guys are, are unsure of or just have a question, don't hesitate to drop me a comment and I'll hit you back and join my Discord. Uh, you can hit me up through there, ask me any questions on there. When there's trouble, you call DW. I always got your backs, but I always try to make time. Uh, for my subscribers, my viewers, uh, my followers and supporters, I greatly appreciate uh, all the feedback you guys are giving me, the likes, the thumbs up. Just keep bringing it and I'm gonna keep bringing you videos just like this. If you guys like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, DIY, everything I'm doing on the channel. Go ahead and click the subscribe button. I do have a lot more videos on deck. I did a post the other day that kind of gave a breakdown of some of the upcoming videos that I have. Uh, silk printing part three. I'm going to be doing a new unboxing and first print video for a print company called Two Trees. There's so many videos that I have to do. I'm just getting behind the ball. We just got back from Disney. So uh, taking that week off, I'm even further behind. So I'm going to be banging out more and more videos. This was very important to me uh, because, you know, the whole wet sanding thing was something that I've kind of uh, been known for. And uh, a lot of people were asking me about Duralumin. You know, this thing looks absolutely awesome. Great, great product. Make sure to hit up the Digital Armory on Etsy. I will make sure to not only leave their link in the description, but any other products that I used. Again, you guys have questions, make sure to drop me a comment. You know, I'll hit you back. So that's it for now, guys. I am gonna get moving on to the next project. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And until next time, DW out. Later. Yeah, she